As we mentioned earlier, the U.S. is warning Israel it must allow more aid like food and medicine into Gaza in the next 30 days, or the U.S. could suspend military support. The Biden administration says last month Israel slowed or stopped nearly 90 percent of the aid across Gaza. We are joined now by Avril Benoit from Doctors Without Borders, which has teams on the ground in Gaza right now, right now providing medical assistance. Avril, thank you so much for joining us. I, I want, if you, if you could, paint a picture for us about what your team is seeing and how difficult is it to get the supplies to the people who need it most. Can you, can you tell us about, answer both of those questions, if you would, please. Yeah, well, as you know, that the, the hospital system has been, for the most part, destroyed. There are maybe 17 out of 35 hospitals that are still trying to hang on, and we've now set up a couple of field hospitals to, to make up for uh, a, a difference that's insurmountable even for a, a well-equipped healthcare system. These hospitals, these clinics, the ones that are uh, seeing uh, patients walking in with skin rashes, with diarrhea because of the, the lack of clean drinking water, and, and all the catastrophic injuries that often come in with, with mass casualty events, you know, when you've got a, a bombing. Um, the hospitals are overwhelmed and they do lack supplies. And not only are we having difficulty bringing the supplies into Gaza, there are enormous restrictions placed on that. The trickle of trucks, not nearly enough, and that's been the case from the beginning, but it's even worse now since the, the Rafa crossing was closed. Um, but even within Gaza, to be able to take the, the supplies, the medical supplies to the north is almost impossible. And even within those areas that are deemed to be safe, that are supposedly protected, in our experience, it's just, it's not being allowed. So often the requests are denied. Um, things are not allowed in that are medical items or water and sanitation items because they're deemed to be dual use. There are all kinds of restrictions mm. that make it impossible for the hospitals to really treat people properly. Just looking at the pictures, you can tell the logistics are quite bad. Does your team ever feel threatened by people who say, look, if you try to come in here, we will attack you? Do they feel physically threatened doing their jobs? Well, there's no doubt that there has been uh, such a, a desperate shortage of supplies that there are some routes that are allowed by the Israeli uh, authorities that actually are not safe because there are uh, criminal gangs, uh, if you will, that are that are trying to take what is on the trucks. And that, that of course, creates a lot of tension because we would want secure routes to the humanitarian aid. The, the greatest threat that our teams are experiencing, though, without a doubt, is uh, the bombardments, um, the, the ta attacks that are happening against healthcare facilities. Even just a couple of days ago, uh, one of the hospitals where we've been working for many months had yet another uh, shelling incident. And, and this makes it impossible to work safely. So that, above all, is the greatest threat. Avril, what do you need Israel to do, and also what do you need Hamas as a controlling government in Gaza to do in order to help you do your job? Yeah, Hamas is running the, the health ministry that uh, any health organization uh, is interacting with. Uh, and they are certainly, uh, you know, uh, in a military conflict with Israel. Uh, when we call for a ceasefire as a humanitarian community for around a year now, we've been calling for this. It, of course, applies to all the, the armed parties. So Israel, mm. Hamas, any other group, of course, it applies to everyone. And we want everyone to understand the importance of being able to provide humanitarian aid is impossible when you've got open fighting going on. But also, mm. it's impossible when there's impediments to the delivery of humanitarian aid for people to get in and out, for us to do medical evacuations, all the things that should be protected for civilians under international humanitarian law are not in place in Gaza. You know, Avril, our, our viewers have big hearts. We have big hearts. We see the suffering there, uh, and people want to help. Uh, they can't influence Hamas. They can't influence Netanyahu. It seems like no one can. So what do people at home watching this, hearing you, seeing these pictures, what can they do, if anything, to help the folks in Gaza? I agree with you, and it's very frustrating, especially for Americans or those in other countries that are actually providing the weapons uh, for the fighting to go on uh, for, the, for the Israeli side. Uh, there's no doubt that it's, it's frustrating. You feel powerless uh, to stop the carnage, to stop the suffering. Um, 
We need all the help we can get, though, uh, to be able to, to obviously broker some sort of ceasefire that is long sustained. And uh, we try to update everyone as much as we can about what we're doing. Uh, DoctorsWithoutBorders.org is our website. There are many other fine organizations that are doing their level best to alleviate the suffering and to save lives. Uh, but everything is stacked against us at this point. It's an absolute horror day after day. Avril Benoit, thank you for joining us. And we pray for the safety of you and your team and the work that you're doing and also the civilians in Gaza. Thank you.